up guys, Foden of 40k. Now we come to the final stage of this road asset. So I'm sorry it's a bit late. Um, sort of got stuck doing other things, so I thought I might as well finish it. So first of all, what we're going to do is create our final maps for, for rendering. So try and keep this all together. Hmm, what can I do just so it's all nice and easy to see? Keep it all nice and presentable. Um... Do you know what? Just duplicate some of those just purely for show. So yeah, that can be fine. We do a few renders of those. Nothing special. So what we're going to do is file export those as an FBX. So we'll call that road assets and we'll put that in the road assets folder uh, for an FBX export and then that means we can then put it into marmoset and uh, x normals so let's boot up x normals there it is uh, and right now we're gonna create an ambient occlusion map so actually I forgot to check if this is all optimized I'm pretty sure it is but because I haven't done this for a while yeah it's cool that needs to be optimized um, in order for this to work on x normals otherwise it will prompt you um, so where's the road assets folder here we go uh, road assets FBX in high poly and the low poly as well. Um, ambient occlusion is selected. Um, was that a 1024 by 1024? The texture size. I don't know if it will tell me in the details. No, that's no problem. Just boot up the old PSD because we're going to need it anyway. And let's have a look. Oh, um, that is not good. For some reason, I've lost the file. Okay, um, no worries. I'll just have to sort of carry on. Eek. So, there's our diffuse map. <laughs> Can't edit any of it now, so I'll have to do. Um, and then our normal map on top. So, we still got them, so that's cool. Um, we might just have to play around with some masking stuff. That's cool. So, canvas size I need to know, don't I? 1024 by 1024, right here. So, that can come down. Um, I'll pop that on the old folder as well. Uh, road assets. I'll just call that road assets. And it will use a an extension of occlusion so I don't need to name that so save uh, times four and that's all I need to do load them in check ambient occlusion uh, keep all the sentences like they are here anti-aliasing times four um, edge padding doesn't really matter I don't really change it but um, you can try bumping up to about eight if you want it just stops the overlapping of some stuff um, so then we can generate and while that's generating that does take a bit of time um, We'll come and do our our other things. So we'll actually first of all we'll open up Marmoset. We will import our FBX, which is this one. Um, load up the textures. So we got something like that. And now we need to work on the gloss and spec maps. Now I'm going to open up Quixel Suite. I'm going to use a lot of programs for this. I'm just going to give it a test. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's or how it's going to look, but um, I've never actually used this feature before, so I thought it might be useful to give it a go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and go on to Endu. Oops. That's a bit frozen. Hopefully it didn't crash. There we go. And I can come up here to Map Converter, and I'm going to turn this into a specular. And then Activate Dock. I'm going to see what results it gives us. So this is going to be an automatic specular map. Um, if it doesn't look that good, we'll just go make it ourselves. That's no problem. But I'm going to do this, save out, pop it into Marmoset, see what it does. So what I think it's possibly use. Oh, that doesn't look right, does it? There we go. That's more specular. So get out of the way um, 
Oh, it looks a bit odd, I must admit. I'm just going to have a quick test then. Let's bring that into here. Let's save that out as a spec and see what it looks like on our model. I'm not actually confident this will look good, but it's all about giving it a go and just seeing what happens. So, specular map, we can pop that in there. Yeah, I thought we'll get some sort of horrible look there. And I noticed that when I saw these bits. Um, let's have a look at the rest. So, let's... I mean, obviously, the gloss levels we still haven't we haven't done, but yeah, I don't I don't like all the areas here. They just don't look right for me. So that's no problem. We'll, worth giving it a bit of a test. We'll do it manually. So let's look at bit by bit. Let's start with this area. So I need to sort of figure out what gloss and what specular levels I want. So I want it a little bit glossy, you know, and then a bit of, oh sorry I forgot to take the spec map off, there we go, sorry. So a little bit of specular, and don't forget I'm only focusing on this speed bump, maybe whack down the gloss a little bit. Something to about there I'm happy with and adjust the Fresnel there we go something like that I'll be quite happy with so it's got a bit of shininess to it but not too much Quite looks quite rough so let's have a look so we've got little intensity for the specular and just over halfway on the gloss so what we need to do now we can duplicate our uh, diffuse and then remove everything apart from oops, rasterize it first everything apart from this bit here which is what we're going to need um, yep and then we can come into the color and it was just about, about there I think it was so let's have a look. We can save this now as gloss. Road assets gloss. Let's see if this gloss looks correct once I insert that. So just do that. I'll pop it over to the other side. I'm only going to select the gloss. Yeah, that's pretty much fine. I'm happy with that. And then we can go on doing the gloss on this one. We'll do gloss first and spec. That's always easier that way. Um, so take off the gloss map now and then re adjust this one most likely going to be oh hello let's have a look what how much shine we want there's quite a bit of noise on that for what well, the normal map detail that is so I want sort of a low specular but kind of a high gloss something like that something that's going to reflect quite quite well there we go I'm happy with something like that so a gloss again, just a bit under white. So let's look at our diffuse. We'll duplicate it, rasterize it, and we'll see what areas we need. So we don't need the top bit because we've already done that. Um, and we then we don't need the bottom here. And then we don't need this bit either. So then we're just left with this metal. So we'll do that and then do something like that and then I'll do roughly just the other the cones and whatnot um, gloss and halfway will be fine I'm quite happy with that so then I can just duplicate that raster and then I can change this actually to uh, about half because the others are overlapping so what I can do is I can group that and call it gloss and then I'll save that out and let's see what we get and if, if I'm happy with that then we'll go and do the um, no road assets gloss and then we'll do the specular there 
that and add in the gloss and then obviously it's not, not changed that much it's because I still need to input the level of specularity so let's go and do that now so for this I wanted something like like that wasn't it so it was about a third ish of the way so I can du duplicate my gloss call that spec and that was the third of the way so it needs to be quite dark something about there um, the railings itself can come up to just over halfway do it quite rough and then we'll we'll return um, is that right? alright yeah yeah sorry I can't I thought that was the cutoff, that was the same as the background, so couldn't see that very well. And then the cone. Let's have a look. I mean there probably is an easy way of doing this, but I always like to get hot get hang of the basics first. If I can do this manually as best I can, then I won't have to rely on other programs that can do it for me. I mean obviously that's nice and every now and again it'll be good to use, but I, I don't use that as a a primary method. There we go, that will do. Now this is a very rough spec map, as opposed to a gloss as well. Quite lazy, but as long as they're covering the UV shells as needed, it's not that much of an issue. But for more professional kind of, you know, assets and that, you would tidy that up a bit. So, let's save that as a spec, and let's import that. There we go, and then we got... I think I need to bump the spec on this a bit. Happy with the spec on the speed bump and the cones are, I think are fine as well. They're slightly reflective but not that bad. And then we do have to put the AO in as well which we'll have to wait for that to be done. Which it is done which is good. So I can close that done. Uh, down sorry done. Okay. Uh, and then let's go and bump this up a bit as well for the specular. and resave that so targa road asset asset spec oh not word there we go get the sort of the more shine down the edges here right so i'm quite happy with that and then let's go to occlusion activate that and then choose our occlusion map I'll bring this back over now and it'll be road assets occlusion and then this, so as you can see, stuff like down here, we've got some ambient occlusion. If I turn it on and off, it's sort of darkened it. These creases. Ooh. That's another thing we'll do. We haven't finished with the air yet. We need to get the ambient occlusion from our normal details. So we'll open up our normal map. What am I doing? AO map I need. Um, occlusion that's cool I'll hide that for a sec then I'll close this down don't need that that wasn't very good then we'll open up our normal map separately and then go to our map converter and we'll change that to an AO so we're using our normal details to bake AO or ambient occlusion in those little crevices and that we've created as you can see here so what I can do is I can just merge that select all Control C to copy, bring that over, Control V. So and I can activate both, but one's overlay in the top. So what I do is I put this one on top and then set that to multiply. So then that will transfer onto the one below it. But this one needs to be normal still. And then once that's done, you can merge them. So then it's one flat layer. And then we can save that out. So Targa, um, I'll, I'll keep that just in case, right, road assets AO and we'll replace it with that road assets AO so as you can see here now a lot darker as you can see and then we can change the level of ambient occlusion that we want on this, I don't want too much, I don't want it to be the full full hog but maybe about half half will be fine so there we go if I get the sky and start rotating it a bit we can sort of see how our environment is reacting to our models as you see the lights passes the light passes and whatnot 
and that's the kind of sort of look that I want. So what we can do now, probably get let's get a few little basic renders. So we'll put that back. We will, I don't know, let's just be a bit fancy. We haven't lost time. 15 minutes, so it's not too bad. Add a bit of depth of field. Uh, near blur, complete. Sorry, near blur completely down so we can see it all sharply. And then the far blur. We'll pull it to about mid and then we'll adjust the focal distance. Something like that. I'm not actually going to render it, but you know, so it's nice and sharp to the to the camera, and then as it fades, you get a more blurred image as you do there, and that's a good good way of presenting your models. If you've modelled a chair, say, and you've put it in the corner of a room and you render it out, make sure you use depth of field. Everything is there, but you focus that on that chair. The rest is there, but it's just slightly blurred out, which means it focuses the eye directly on that subject, and that might be a good way of presenting your models as well and then you can do other things like you know color corrections uh, if you really wanted to there's where is it down here bloom which is horrible but some people like it I guess um, vignette so just have a little play around but here we go I will turn off my depth of field now there we go and field of view as well feel free to play around with the field of view of the camera camera lens so Let's do that and then zoom in a bit. So yeah, have a little play around, and that's our road assets now complete and rendered. Um, and then hopefully in the next tutorials, I'll start modeling something a little bit more advanced. You know, so moving away from the little basic shapes now and the basic topology, and I'm going to show you how to use different meshes, uh, meshes, and then start combining them correctly. Uh, and various techniques on how I would model things as I did with this gate by modeling one and then duplicating it across. I'll show you all those kind of tips and tricks which hopefully you can pick up on and learn. So please like and comment and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.